Right, a little while ago I showed this excellent treadmill motor set um, which I got off of eBay and it actually comes with the motor, the um, control unit, the um, display and the remote control and the switches and wires to actually um, get it all working. And if you watched that video you'd have seen what an excellent piece of kit this is and if you look on eBay, I'll put the links below, you'll be astounded at what price this kit has been sold for. And it's not like buying a second hand treadmill motor set which would have had much use and you won't be certain of. Um, this is actually surplus stock and it's unused. And I'm really pleased with the set and I really like the remote control and display unit and I'm going to be using this set on my milling attachment for the MyFed ML7 I hope. If you have a look on eBay, the same seller is selling the motor on its own and today I'd just like to show you an alternative um, speed control unit um, which you can use to power it. So it's called a DLM speed control and I got it from Banggood and it has an input voltage of AC 220 volts and an output voltage of DC 0 to 220 volts and it can control motors from 0 to 400 watts. And you can see the box is nice and small and it's got um, screw holes obviously to mount into um, another safe box. The terminals are on the back there and open. And it's all very straightforward. You have the AC um, input at the top on the two terminals and then the DC two terminals output. And then you have another two terminals, which is an emergency shutdown switch. And I've only wired it up temporarily just for this um, video. And it does say in the features that it can be used for DC 24 volt, 36 volt, 90 volt, 180 volt um, DC motors, etc. And the treadmill motor is um, 200 watts, so it's ideal for this one. And on the front you have the on-off switch and the potentiometer. They do um, specify in the instructions on it that um, you're not to turn the potentiometer up um, to full speed at first. Otherwise the fuse could be blown. Um, so um, turn it up nice and smoothly. So now I'm going to use my excellent smart sensor digital tachometer is the AR925 um, is the best tachometer that I've um, ever had is a contact one. It comes with um, various different um, ends uh, so that you can actually put them into a spindle hole. Um, there's a wheel one there and today I'm using this cup one here. I've taken the pulley off so I can actually put that cup one onto the end of the spindle. And what I like about this um, digital tachometer, it runs on three um, AAA batteries and not only does it do RPM, it also does meters a minute and feet a minute. And it also has a maximum hold and a minimum hold for the memory. And you can see there it has auto shut off which is good and saves power. So the slowest usable speed is about 310 RPM. When 
it goes into the thousands the point disappears just over 4,000. So again I think the control box is an excellent piece of kit and really well worth the money. And I was very interested um, to see what quality um, a motor this is, uh, it runs so nicely and smoothly. Um, I've taken it apart and I've done some close up photos to show you exactly um, the actual quality of it. Um, you can see uh, particularly by the commutator and brush end um, how good it is. And um, the brushes are just a normal type, they're not special shaped or anything, so it's perfect for the motor to run in both directions without any um, excessive wear on those brushes. And seeing that part like this um, just shows how easy it is to actually um, clean the commutator if it needs cleaning in the future. Um, I doubt if it will for um, many years. I did find the um, two screws very tight to undo and you have to be really careful that you don't actually round off the uh, crosshead. Um, when you take the armature out from the actual housing, the magnets are very powerful and with this type of motor um, it's best to actually push uh, the spindle out from the um, front end. Um, if you grab hold of the back end and try and pull it out, the armature will stay in place on those powerful magnets and the um, uh, brushes will come off from the commutator and fly out. So like I say, push from the front and as the armature comes out of the housing, grab hold of it like that and then pull it out and then the brushes will um, remain in place. And when you replace the armature in the housing, you have to hold it very tightly um, so it doesn't get pulled forward suddenly um, because those uh, magnets are very easy to chip. And again, you have to be really careful with those um, strong magnets um, that the armature doesn't get pulled forward uh, from the back end here. Otherwise, those brushes uh, will fly out of position. I found the easiest method is to actually hold the armature like this with my thumb under the armature and hard on the table. So it's holding it um, quite centrally. Um, you have to use quite a bit of um, holding power and then just feed that... Um, housing down over the armature 
and be careful that it doesn't suddenly um, pull it um, or pull the commutator off uh, from those brushes. Uh, put um, a hand inside onto the spindle and then just uh, carefully um, let it um, go in by the magnetic force like that and just carefully slide it in it pulls in by its own force actually on the magnets and um, that's back safely in position and I know those um, brushes are still on the commutator and obviously you have to make sure that the um, housing um, is the right way um, the short end um, face here to the magnets obviously at the front and the long end at the back allowing for the um, commutator assembly and then you have to look at the back end and see where the um, threaded holes are for these some um, long screws there is a little um, square marker there um, which marks that um, or one of those screws there so you know those are in line and then you have to get those um, screw holes uh, dead center um, in the gap between the magnets. I have actually marked uh, my body so I know that on there. And um, when that's dead central you can line up the screw holes at the front and replace the end cap and bearing housing. Make sure the little square um, marker is on the scratched mark if you have one. And then just sight down through to see that the front is lining up with the back. And then I just place the motor on a vice like this to stop it rolling about. Make sure those uh, marks are lined up again. And then I just use a bit of um, gaffer tape. Um, so that those end caps don't move off uh, from those marks. Everything's nicely lined up. I've shown this before. And then I just use one of these um, quick release um, type holders just to hold those um, end caps in position and everything nice and tight and solid and then I get my 1 8 brass um, rod it has a pointed end and um, these screws here have a bit of a dimple on the end there so I feed the brass rod through and it doesn't get attracted to the magnets put that dimple on that point and let that feed through the um, housing push it down like that until it locates the um, screw hole and just do a couple of turns um, so it doesn't um, get attracted to the magnet so then I just um, nip the first one up Then turn the motor over to do the other side. Feed that um, brass rod down through again. I see the end cap does have one of those square um, indent markers for both screws actually. Put the indent of the screw on the end of that brass rod and as I'm pushing it through, let the rod feed through my um, left hand and push it all the way home. And then again, just start off a couple of threads. And then just tighten those both up. And if you didn't do it that way, you'd find it virtually impossible um, to get the screws in because they're always attracted to those magnets, whereas the brass rod isn't. And finally, just give it a test run to see that it's all okay.
and I think they are absolutely excellent quality motors and brilliant value for money.